Hey, it's Katya here, and this is just a quick video tutorial on how to connect your PayPal purchase or any purchase to any email ser service provider. So ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, you can do this with MailChimp, you can do this with really anything where you have the automated email set up. And I just have to say, wow, because I just got asked this question, this specific question, whether it was PayPal to ConvertKit, PayPal to ActiveCampaign, by like over 10 people in the last hour. So I was like, okay, I definitely have to do this video as soon as possible. I was doing some other stuff, but I stopped and, and got onto this one for you guys. So, and this is pretty awesome because that means you guys are actually creating stuff and selling it and making sales and adding value through your automated emails and doing really awesome stuff with your technology and systems. So kudos to you. Stop and celebrate that because that's really awesome. And then what you're about to do and learn is just as equally as awesome. Especially I love systems. I'm the nerd here. So <laughs> don't worry when I geek out. It's just totally normal. So... What I have opened up is my PayPal. I have my email service provider, which is ConvertKit. Yes, you can do this in ActiveCampaign as well. I got a lot of questions on ActiveCampaign. Open that one up. Open up Zapier.com. And I have my website open. I want to show you a little bit extra um, just to complete the whole picture of what this would look like. And so I'm starting here at PayPal. Uh, I'm not going to show you my main PayPal page because, of course, I have private information and, and, and stuff there. Um, not just for me, but like for like my general business and team. So find the PayPal button. Uh, they changed it. I think it's like under the tools menu and then you click create payment button. And I have a couple here, but I'm just going to create a new one just to walk you through it. And so you can you can create if you have like. Um, I think like PayPal Pro or something. I'm not a PayPal user. I'm a Stripe user. So I'm a little rusty with PayPal. But like you could do like automatic billing and installment plans and stuff like that. Oh, I think it's taking me somewhere else that I don't want to go. Let's go back to buy now. So let's say let's keep it simple and pretend that we're doing like a $100 uh, product just right now. That's all we're doing right now. And, um, and I have my convert kit sequence set up. Let's call it the accomplish anything membership. Um, even though there's no emails in there right now, just pretend it's in there. And there's a couple of emails that are going to be sent out or look, we can look at this one, um, that I just sent out literally yesterday. And in convert kit, it's this email is, is going to be sent out immediately and it gives them exactly what they were, um, opting in to get. So let's just pretend, okay, I'm selling my Epic system for getting more shit done. Let's call it that. Epic system for getting more shit done. I thought it was like a, I thought I wrote four step system, but I guess not. And that's $100. And so when somebody, what we want to happen is when somebody purchases this, they start getting this email campaign. And the first email is like, here's the system that you just purchased. And then you can do follow up emails, like adding more value and connecting and engaging them or segmenting them. It's like, hey, if you like this, you can also check out these other types of things. Um, and then within convert kits and um, active campaign, and um, I don't know what else everybody else is using, but these two were the main ones I got questions about. You can add more tags and more automations and segmentation within that. That's a whole other video topic, so let's stay on topic for this one. No shipping, no extra things. Um, email address to receive payments. Oh, is it like it has me logged out of my PayPal for some reason right now? But you get the point. You create the whole button. Let me log in. Okay, so I'm logged back in and I have my title, my price, and all of this stuff. We don't really need inventory. Save the button. We don't really need customers customization. Special instructions, no. Shipping address, no. You can have a thank you page um, that like, you know, lets them know like, okay, you know, like, or purchase complete or something like that. You can have a, a hidden page on your website. It's like, oh, thank you for purchasing and welcome. You'll be getting your stuff as soon as possible. Um, just check your email to confirm. Oh no, this is if they cancel. Look at me like not reading. This is if they finish the checkout. If they cancel, you can send them to a different page. Um, you can do like a down sell or like give them some free products or something to opt into or whatever. You can come up with this. I'm just gonna turn it off right now. 
and then we create the button. So now we have this that you can add to your website and that's what I have open right now. I'll walk through that in a bit. And we have our automated email or automation and campaigns set up on whatever you're using. And now we're going to open Zapier and create a Zap. And so you can connect PayPal, you can connect whatever payment processor you have. And a, we're going to choose a successful sale. And so just follow the instructions for whatever you're connecting. You can literally just click to open this link on a separate tab. I already have it set up, but you'll just follow the instructions and edit the settings. Um, other tools will ask you to connect in different ways, so just follow the instructions. They're usually um, pretty good about that. Okay, and just make sure you have at least one recent successful sale created. I probably don't have one. Um, let's see what they got. Okay, oh, so they made a test one. That's pretty cool. So they made a test item for us. So let's continue. And now we're going to choose your email service provider. So if you have ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, there's like, there's a long list of these. So I'm just gonna go with my ConvertKit account. Oh, wait, hold on. My auto correct does that. And so you can choose what you wanna add them to. What I usually do is I immediately add them to a sequence and then within ConvertKit or wherever you're automating, you could add the automation to um, tag them. And I, I especially like to tag my paid clients and customers. So it's like, oh wait, sorry. So like, let's say when they're added to this sequence, it tags them as a paid client. Let's just say a one-on-one -on -one client. So what's happening is, they purchase, they click this button, they purchase. Zapier notices this successful purchase, adds them to the Epic system sequence that I have here on ConvertKit or the automation, the email that you have on ActiveCampaign. And then I create this other automation rule that makes um, whoever is subscribed to the sequence, it adds this tag. That way I can keep track of it on ConvertKit or you can keep track of it, of it on ActiveCampaign as well. So. Continuing on, um, I have my ConvertKit account connected already. You can easily connect it, follow the instructions. And then so the sequence to add the subscriber to is the Epic system for getting more shit done. The email ad address, so this is just basically you have this successful sale on, on PayPal, so you're just going to take the information you get from that sale. So this is the test email. And then we've got the first name that we want to put in as well. It's going to be test. And so this is what's going to happen. Once this purchase is made, the email and first name is going to go into this sequence. And then we can create and continue on with that. Now, here's what happens. What happens if you have multiple purchase buttons, like multiple PayPal buttons, multiple products on PayPal to sell? What was happening for one of my clients is that she started with one product, so it was it, this worked for her, but then we needed to create a new product to sell on PayPal as well, and we needed to create a new Zap here. So let's just say this is the Epic System product, and now um, we have this other product called the 28-Day uh, Jumpstart to Systems or something, completely different products, same topic. So we have to be careful that um, Zapier doesn't just run every single purchase to this sequence because if somebody purchased, let's actually change it. Let's say it's like the Epic system for making more money and this is the Epic system for doing more and, and getting more stuff done. If somebody makes a purchase on PayPal for the make more money, but then they get added to this sequence for getting more shit done, that's incorrect. So how we fix this is by adding this filter here in Zapier. And you could add more actions, but we're adding a filter right now. And then what you want to do is go here to item name. And you'll want to test this out because I've noticed sometimes it comes out in different uh, places. Like it could be this item name. Um, let's see. I remember one of my clients having it in a really weird place. So it could be, it could be item name one or two. So what you would see here 
is you would have different sales and one of them would be called like so if you're if one of them is called make more money and the other one is called get more done you'll see that here you'll see the button name right here you'll see the per like from the purchase and so this is where it kind of gets tricky with my clients we had to actually get a couple of sales to notice like like what was going on so if you set up your first product and test it out and run through it and it works you'll be able to know like, okay, it's, it's like this item name right here. And then we want to do um, exactly matches. And then you want to literally copy and paste. It says test item one. So you're going to do test item one, right? To, to be able to filter it out. So let's say that's your first product. And then you can save that. But now let's say we're doing your second product and it's called test item two. I want you to see where the filter stops it. You see, so let's say this is your second product and so, so somebody just bought test item one. Um, and this is the zap for test item two. So this will not run and people will not be added into the sequence num for, for product number two. You'll have a separate zap for test item one for the first product. I hope that makes sense. It's a little tricky. I recommend you start with your first product and test that out before adding another one, and you'll start to see what I mean by that, by all of this going on. Um, especially because you know filters can get a little tricky, and and yeah, you have to be very very careful because it it's kind of weird, you know, having multiple products and then people getting added into the wrong automations or sequences and then it gets a little bit messy. So start with one product, one zap and one automation, see how that works out and then once you've gotten a few purchases, you can try testing it out having a second product with adding the filters. So the first product you ever make, you don't need a filter at all. At all at all you'll start to have to put the filters in once you have two or more products and you'll need to have a filter for each and every product. You need to make sure it filters in for product one, for product two, for product three, and so on and so forth, okay? And then so the way it's gonna work is you get this code and then you just, here's my Squarespace website in the back end. This is how you add a PayPal button to Squarespace just really quick. We go down to the code option and we just copy and paste it. So now we have our buy now button. Somebody clicks here and purchases. So let's say I make the payment and then Zapier will run this. Okay, so this is my client's Zapier account and I just kind of wanted to show you how it's going to look like for you. She has multiple products so you can see she has PayPal and then a filter into ConvertKit. And if we go here and we look at the history we can see where there were successful payments and then where it was filtered because um, it was a different item. I can't find the item name right here and I don't, I don't want to give information out. So you'll start to see where things are working and if it doesn't work, you'll be able to tell exactly what happened and why it didn't work and you'll be able to troubleshoot it. So this zap will take your payment take the email and name information and put it into the sequence, whether it's ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or whatever you're using. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm available for more video tutorials. I absolutely love doing this. So feel free to comment below with any questions, all right? Hope you enjoyed this. Have fun creating your products and adding your e automated emails and everything, all the systems together. Zapier is a ton of fun, so do play around with it and explore more, okay? And I'll see you next time.